So you're thinking about moving to the Fort Lauderdale and South Florida area, and you're still in the planning stages. Well, you definitely want to stick around and watch this video. Today, we're going to be talking about things they don't tell you when moving to the South Florida area. So this way you don't wind up like some of the people that move here and become very, very unhappy. Now, the first thing you need to know is that life isn't always going to be about the beach or the water. Uh, kind of like you can see in the background here, we're at the, uh, the Riverwalk in downtown Fort Lauderdale. You can see the boats and the canals and the yachts. But there's a whole other world associated with Fort Lauderdale and South Florida. And the reason I go into this is that we have two different types of people that reach out through the channel that are moving here. Uh, you have the first group, and they already know of an area they're going to be moving to or want to move to. Uh, either job relocation, so they have kind of like a geographic area that they know they want to be around, schools and commuting. Now the other distinct group are the ones that just want to move to the South Florida area. They don't really know where they want to be. And usually when we meet people like that, they always right away say, well, I want to be close to the beach or I want to be near downtown Fort Lauderdale, near the activities. Now, I guess this is pretty common. If I go back to my experience, I lived in New York. I moved to California, Los Angeles, when I was 21. And there was a show, I don't want to date myself, but there was a show on TV at the time, uh, Beverly Hills 90210. And I thought all of uh, California was like that, which it totally was not. There are areas like that, but there's a whole other world there as well, just like here. So we have two distinct areas in you know, South Florida. You have the east side and the west side and both are very, very different. Now, generally speaking, people here that live on the east side, they either want to be in a condo by the water, they like the downtown atmosphere and activities, they like the boating lifestyle, they like the beach and things like that. Um, the west, I would consider it type of a suburb or just like some other areas, you know, you think of the suburbs, you move out, there's a lot more family neighborhoods, uh, there's better schools in general. Uh, if, you're not ta if you're talking public schools, there's much more gated communities. It is geared a little bit more towards families, so that's kind of like the distinction. Now, the differences between the east side and the west side, well, first of all, the east side is much more busy, so it's a lot more congested. There's a lot more traffic, so you're going to have to factor that in if you move here and you're going to be commuting, you know, anywhere just to get from by the beach to uh, Interstate 95, any time during rush hour is just a pain in the butt. It's gonna be very congested, it's gonna take you a lot longer to commute, so that's one of the differences right there. Also, it's more expensive on the east side, so a lot of the homes on the east side were built earlier, or they're older than the newer homes on the west side. The west side tends to be a little bit bigger as far as the homes, more walk-in closets, things like that. Unless a home was recently redone, in Fort Lauderdale, there's some incredible, incredible homes there, but I'm talking in general terms. Now, one observation that I have made for sure from living here for almost 19 years now, and also helping a lot of people move here, some people start out on the east side, and eventually, as they're here for you know a certain number of years and it's time for them to move, they sometimes go a little bit west um, because they know that they can probably get more for their money. They know it's very short distance to, to come down to Fort Lauderdale or the beach and you know have access to all the amenities that are here. So that's just an observation uh, from helping a lot of people that make the move. So you definitely need to know the differences between the east side and the west side. Make sure you know this before you come and actually purchase a property and wind up very unhappy. So the next thing you need to know about is the walkability. So this is definitely one of the things that people ask for is an area that's walkable. Unfortunately, this area in South Florida is not very walkable. Now each city has its own town center or some sort of a shopping area where you could walk to if you have a home that's very close to that. But other than that, you're gonna need some transportation. Now you can see these train tracks that I'm walking over right here. These are for the Bright Line, which is something that people are very, very excited about. This is a high speed uh, train or rail line that goes all the way from Miami, going all the way up to Orlando, and eventually there's plans to make it go to Tampa. So this is a very, very cool thing. A lot of people very, very excited about that because, you know, driving up to Orlando is really a pain. It's very congested up there with all the theme parks and things to do. So being able to take the family up on the train is really, really useful, and a lot of people are very, very happy about that. So like I said, walkability, not a strong suit here in South Florida. Um, I've never taken the public transportation here. 
I know it's getting better, but not at this time. We're not known for public transportation. Now, another thing you definitely need to know about moving anywhere to the state here in Florida has to do with the rising prices of homes, property taxes, home insurance, and condo fees. Now they are definitely going up. And if you look, or at least I see online and through the media, they seem to paint a picture about you know, Florida almost likes isolating it. Now these issues are going on throughout the country. It's not only isolated to the state of Florida. We might um, be in a particularly different situation because we are the number one state for inbound migration. So more people are moving here, which in turn makes some of our metro areas go up and get more unaffordable than others. But housing prices, home insurance, condo fees are going up everywhere throughout the country. So the reason costs are going up has to do with inflation. Everything is more expensive. It's more for uh, repairs and maintenance. And again, it really has to do with inflation. So let's see where we go from here. I know a lot of people are hoping and thinking that eventually things are gonna turn around and go back to the way they were. Unfortunately, I don't think that's gonna be the case. I really think this is gonna be our new normal. So hopefully inflation is going to go down to a point where it's manageable, but I don't think we're ever going to go back to the days where uh, things were cheap, say like 2020 cheap and interest rates, especially at that time. Now, the next thing you need to be aware of and know about are the schools and the school ratings. This is one of the uh, main criteria and benchmark for where somebody wants to move to. These people are reaching out through the channel. Now, Broward County, or the greater Fort Lauderdale area in general, has a pretty good uh, school system overall. We're talking public schools. I think they're rated around a B plus, but this can be very, very deceiving because depending on where you look, certain cities have better school ratings and others don't have very good school ratings. And that is another thing that I've seen a lot of people when choosing an area, they go specifically by ratings. Now I know people, I have family that have gone to schools in plantation, public schools, they're not rated that great, but they're very good schools. Nobody had any issues that I know of. And I still have family that are in some of these schools. So you gotta be kind of careful judging everything by online ratings. Uh, they are a good tool to use, and there's a lot of sites that's making it a lot easier and useful for the public, but you gotta be kind of careful. We have a lot of uh, good Catholic schools, charter schools, and private schools as well. So make sure you do a little more research than just going off of some of these online sites. Now we have uh, niche.com is one place people go, bestplaces.net, there's schools.org, but just try to go a little more in depth as far as uh, trying to pick an area just based on these school ratings. Now, another thing you need to know about is the weather. So I'm getting a handful of questions from people reaching out specifically regarding the weather. Um, hurricanes, you know, if we have a lot of flooding, which areas flood. I'm also getting some people that are insisting or asking me if the state is sinking and also if it's um, dangerous or a good move to still buy a property that's on the east side by the water because it'll be underwater in say 20, 30 years. So here's the thing guys, if you're gonna move to South Florida, we're always gonna have hurricanes. Uh, that's just the way it is every year between June and November. As far as things sinking and you know the, the water rising and all that type of stuff, you know, if that's something that concerns you, you might not want to move here. Or if you believe that, you might want to put off moving here and picking another place to move to because you're always going to be worrying about that. I don't think anyone knows for sure if that's going to happen, but depending on where you live, if you live in California, you're going to have earthquakes. If you live in the Midwest, you're going to have tornadoes. If you live in Hawaii, you're going to have volcanoes. So it really comes with the territory. But again, if you're someone that really firmly believes that we have some major weather issues and it's only going to get worse, you probably should not move to the state of Florida. Now, last but not least, guys, we got to talk about the people. What type of people you will run into if you move here to the Fort Lauderdale and South Florida area. Now, if you've never been here before and don't really know this, you know, you're going to have to get your information from somebody or unfortunately from some of the most unreliable sources there are, which is the internet, social media, and mainstream media and they're always painting a picture of a place being either totally red and whatever you associate that with or totally blue and i gotta get political because that's how they look at it so florida went red i guess it's a republican state if you go by the votes and what party the governor is from but actually broward county is a blue county but you would never know this to be honest with you i've been here for 19 years and the state of florida looks a lot like the rest of the country, which is people from all different walks of life, all colors, nationalities, all religions, and no one really cares. Everybody gets along, so I don't get this whole, you know, crazy thing. I guess I don't look at it that way, but you can be rest assured, at least, you're not gonna have an issue politically if you move here 
doesn't matter what side of the aisle you're on, unless this is something that is very, very important to you and you look at things through that lens, which is, of course, your right. All right, guys, we're going to wrap it up right there. Things you absolutely must know before moving here to Fort Lauderdale. If you have any questions about anything, or if you're planning on making a move and relocating here to the state, whether it's next week, next month, or next year, I would love to be your real estate resource of choice. All you got to do is reach out. All my information is down below, and I'll catch you guys on the next video. Thank you.